The humble battery, where would we be without it? Well, we certainly wouldn't have any portable music devices or mobile phones. But there's a new type of battery coming to your local stores in about a year or so, and if you want to have a sneak preview about what that's all about, keep watching. Here we are at the bench, and you'll already know from the introduction that today we're going to talk about the new breed of rechargeable batteries that are, will be available in the next couple of years to consumers. But I'm going to do a little bit of a timeline and to tell you how we got to this stage and also give you a little bit of a very, very basics on what a battery is. So let me just bring in my highly advanced uh, graphical aid here. Before we actually start, I want to do you a 101 for, for the people who have just stumbled on this, on this video. Um, the whole point of having a battery is to store energy. You want to charge it up, store the energy, and then until you put it in, to, in the circuit in series, then the electrons, the energy actually flows out and round as electrons round the circuit. That's the whole point. There's nothing more than that. The three main parts of the battery are the anode, the cathode, and the electrolyte. They all give you some sort of chemical ingredients to the whole battery and you any if you're a battery designer if you're a chemical engineer who's designing things for batteries you've got those three elements to play with you can change things in the electrolyte you can change the metals the anodes are made of the metals that the cathode are made made of and you're looking for that perfect balance between the cathode and anode me metals and the electrolyte to get the highest amount of energy packaged in the smallest package with the um the longest discharge time that you possibly can. So if you have um, a, a penny coin and you manage to store a huge amount of energy in there and you can discharge it over the, the course of a day, um, then that's you know, really the holy grail of battery technology. So this is why we have batteries. And over the years, from since the very first ones to what we have now, these elements have been changed to try and increase that energy density in the battery. So no, one, now we've, we know about that, now we're doing a 101 on the battery, let's move on and give you a little timeline about where we are now in the, in, the, in the battery history. Okay, so we're going to start with the battery that I grew up with. I, my formative years was in the 1980s. Uh, that's when I started buying batteries myself for my various audio devices, etc., etc. And it's the alkaline battery. Uh, these, uh, just a few that I've got lying around. This is the starting point. Now, alkaline batteries are the standard type. Uh, you, you, everybody's probably got some alkaline batteries lying around in their house. Um, they're usable in almost any relatively low-powered consumer electronics device. They're cheap. Uh, they're fairly effective in what they do. Um, they're readily available. Pretty much every shop will have some alkaline batteries for sale. Now they do have some disadvantages obviously, they do have some internal leakage so um, if you're unused, if you have unused batteries uh, that's why they have a date on them. So this one's got March 2023, this one's got March 2023, this is March 2024. Uh, what about the Panasonic ones here? These are, uh, can't readily see. Um, but anyway, they have a date on them. They they come pre-charged. You can't, the, at least the standard ones, you can't recharge the alkaline batteries. Um, they're single use and you throw them away um, at the end. And that's one of the big problems um, for the landfill is that um, you have to dispose of them after a single use. And single use things for the planet are not great. But other than that, as a, for a battery, for charging, uh, for powering a device, um, the alkaline battery, that's the standard that we all had, well, I had when I was growing up. There was, not, there was nothing else. You bought um, your Duracells, your Energizer, or EverReady as we had uh, back in, back in the, um, the 80s. Um, and, that, and that was it. You, you put it in, you depleted it, you threw it away. So we've dealt with the alkaline, the old technology, the technology that was in the 1980s and before. So we can take these off the table now because we've dealt with these. 
Now we're moving into the brave new world of the 1990s. So I'll just drop everything over there, and that's what you're hearing. Um, so in the 1990s, we had new portable devices appearing. Now we had mobile phones appearing, the very first ones. We had mini disc players, the portable mini discs. We had game consoles and stuff, uh, portable devices in general that were appearing. Now, you can make your mind up whether it's a chicken and egg situation, whether it was only because we got the next generation of rechargeable batteries um, that the portable devices came to the consumer market, or whether the consumer markets drew, d were driving the development of the rechargeable batteries. But either or, the 1990s saw nickel cadmium NICAD batteries appearing, and these were the first real, genuinely available, consumable rechargeable battery technology. Although they were developed in the 1950s, they were only coming to the, the marketplace for the regular public in the early 1990s. And I don't have any of these devices around. Uh, I haven't got any batteries, NICAD batteries around, but I will show you some images of them just to prove that they were around and you can still buy them. They were easy to charge, which is one of the benefits that they were that, that came in. So you could put them in device and charge them up. They were good. They had a good discharge and charge cycle um, in terms of how many charge and discharge cycles you could have. Uh, they were safe for air transportation. Uh, they were generally quite robust. Uh, but they did, as always, they did have some cons. They did have some things that weren't so good. Um, they had a, a fairly low energy density. Um, so they wouldn't store much and they wouldn't store much for long uh, and, and therefore you were having to charge them and recharge them many times. They did have the ubiquitous memory effect um, that used to build up this artificial level which uh, meant that the capacity was reduced and you must, to keep that charge limit um, from appearing, that memory effect from build up, you must keep charging and discharging over a period of time. Uh, also, once you bought them, once you, if you charged them and, and, and stored them and didn't use them for a while, when you brought them out of, uh, of storage, you'd have to charge them straight away again to get back to your charge because they'd all leaked away, all of that charge. But the big, I think the big problem with, with NICAD, um, nickel cadmium, was the, was the toxins in it. They, were heavy, they had toxic metals in them. Cadmium's fairly toxic because we, we were just waking up to the fact that we were polluting the planet. I think a lot of countries re restricted, heavily restricted the use of NICAD batteries. And therefore, there was immediately, as soon as they started coming out, there was a, a, a idea that we wanted to find something else which wasn't so bad in terms of when we discarded them. So like I said, you can buy them still. You can the usual sites, AliExpress, eBay, specialist battery websites, they all have them, but they're no longer available in local shops or supermarkets. And that was the whole point of this particular video. So because of the, um, the inherent toxicity of NICAD batteries, early in 1990s, there was also, in parallel to NICADs coming out, there was a, a fairly um, robust uh, research plan to try and get another technology that was less toxic. And this, in the late 1990s and early 2000s, to certainly in the UK, these batteries started coming into the shops and they, they were nickel metal hydride. Now, they had some benefits and again, some something against them, the cons, the pros and cons. Uh, the pros were that they were a 30 to 40% higher capacity than NICAD. So, same capacity, same, you know, double A's, triple A's that we've been used to, C's and D's, but higher dis density. Um, they were less prone, although they do still have a memory effect. It's much, much less than the NICAD themselves. So they had a less memory effect and less artificial limits. Um, they still had, they had no, again, no special regulations for air transport, which is good. Uh, they're much better for the environment. Uh, they have mild, only mild toxins, um, but um, you know, obviously, it's not water. It it is still, you shouldn't just go uh, throwing these around. They um, they have, however, these are these are much more profitable for recycling. So recyclable schemes were started up for these batteries, and uh, but again, the, the, the on the on the bad side, on the downside. 
they still have a limited life cycle. Um, they have a, a definite preferable way to charge them. They like shallow charge cycles. Um, if you deep charge them regularly, they degrade really quickly. Um, when you when you charge them up, and you'll feel this if you have them on a on a long slow charge cycle, they will get very very warm. Um, sometimes, if especially if the, if there is a definite de degradation in the in the battery themselves, if you charge them up, um, then then you'll find them very very hot to touch, uh, and they may they, they may be no longer useful for their purpose, and you may have to recycle them. Um, they they do have a high self discharge uh the original ones so if we take out these these ones here are the original nickel metal hydride batteries i'll show you i'll tell you more about the other ones but these ones um these ones here whoops are they all now i tell you my, my table isn't flat um but these are the original ones and they did still have uh, a high self discharge so if you if you charge them up and, and left them for a bit, when you come back, they you would probably have to charge them up again. Um, then they, they felt they found some adding some extra chemicals would reduce that effect. And this is the, this is where you got the any loops and their derivatives. Um, and that did somewhat recharge the self discharge effect. So that's why when you buy an any loop battery, uh, you can buy it with a charge already in it. These didn't have charges in it. Uh, invariably, I'd, when I bought the original nickel metal hydrides, you had to charge them up as soon as you got them to get any use out of them. These, you can put them in directly from the packaging. You can put them into your device directly from the packaging. Uh, and that is the addition, that's just a little bit more research that they did to the ad additional nickel metal hydride um, uh, makeup, chemical makeup. And this is this is kind of where we are now. This was the first lot in this in the in the early in the late 1990s, early 2000s. Then in the mid the the earlys to mids, we've got the we got the any loop uh, technology where you could you could buy them, put them straight in, already pre-charged. They last uh, the charge stuck around a lot longer. Um, but you know they also had they also had they were poor in high temperatures. So if you uh, if you lived in, in areas of a particular high temperature, these wouldn't, they're not great, and also they're more expensive than the the old NiCad. There's also one other thing that's not great about the nickel metal hydride batteries, which I'll tell you about when we go through the graphs of the discharge curves. And now we come on to the point of this video. Really, this is the, what I would like to call the third generation of consumable batteries, rechargeable batteries. These are the lithium-based batteries, which are now just emerging from China and elsewhere in Asia. And these are not yet available in your local shops or supermarkets, but they will be. I bought all these online from AliExpress, eBay, and various places like that. But they are lithium-based. Now, primarily, they'll, they're lithium-ion, but you may also get some that are lithium ion polymer, essentially very similar, except they have a different electrolyte. So the advantages and limitations of the lithium ion, lithium ion polymers. So we start with the lithium ion by default, because they all look the same. They all, they're in the same packaging, but there are subtle differences. And I will go into them more after I've done this quick overview. So energy density. They're much, much higher in energy density. And, it, and the reason why these are started these are now coming out is because we've had a lot of research into lithium ion batteries and that's because we're using them all over the place in mobile phones and laptops in electric cars now so these are um these are now the sort of cutting edge results of that uh, into a small form factor we've got high energy density you've got a low self discharge compared to nicad and nickel metal hydride uh, that means that if you can take if you take them out of the device, you'll still have most of the charge there when you put them back in. They are low maintenance. They don't have the memory effect as the NiCad and to a certain extent Nickel Metal Hydride had. They they do, however, uh, one of the limitations or the cons is that they need extra protection circuitry because, well, 
Lithium's it's quite a dangerous chemical in in various states. So what the exact the the additional circuitry in the packaging will will counteract. It'll just keep it within safe operating limits. It is subject to aging as well if it's not in use. So you've got to to store it in a cool place. Uh, the best the best principle of doing this is store it in cool place with about half charged, and that's the best way to minimise the aging effect. They are expensive. They are expensive when you compare them to the existing uh, rechargeable technology. They are still quite expensive. But the big, I think one of the major factors of the problems with lithium-ion based technology is that they have, because they are um, uh, a little bit dangerous um, when they are operating outside of their normal parameters, um, air transportation regulations are quite severe for these, for, trans for um, transportation of lithium based batteries. If you, for instance, take these batteries and send them via air on their own, so out of a device, uh, then they have a UN, a UN number, uh, 3480, and they have an IATA process for these for transportation of these devices. If you put them in a device, they have a separate UN number, um, 3481, and uh, have a different set of uh, restrictions. But on their own, heavily restricted for air transportation. Heavily, heavily restricted. Uh, there's slightly different advantages and disadvantages when you go for the lithium ion polymer or LiPo, you might see that written down as. Um, they're very similar technology, but they have a different electrolyte in them. So uh, that different electrolyte means that they are, you, you can put them in a different form factor. They're, they're a lower profile, they're flexible form factors, um, they are sort of sl slightly lighter weight, uh, slightly better safety, but the, <laughs> again, the uh, limitations of that is the fact that they have a lower energy density and a lower cycle count, and again, they're expensive. They're very expensive. They're more expensive than the standard uh, lithium-ion battery. So, these are the new ones. This is what I'm going to talk with, to you about in a little bit and show you some uh, demos, but first, First, we need to do to go on to the discharge graphs for rechargeable and against alkaline and uh, show you some of the benefits uh, in, in a graph form. So now you've seen the state of play and you've seen the timeline of how we got to where we are now and you've seen the new third generation rechargeable batteries at a higher level, which we'll go into a little bit after this um, a little bit further. But I wanted to show you some uh, graphical representation of how all these batteries fare in terms of um, energy density and discharge. So I've, with great expense, um, I'm bringing in my CGI graphics to show you this. Um, this is my, <laughs> let's see, let's just, Okay, so I, th I think I'm not going to be able to get this all into shot. But let me just see. As long as I've got the... Um, so as you can see on the bottom, we've got time on that axis. And on the, on the, uh, on the, uh, on the uh, vertical axis, we've got volts. Okay, and then we've got the colour chart, which is red for alkaline, nickel cadmium is pink, blue is nickel metal hydride, and lithium is green. So let's... Just um, make sure we get the bottom axis in first. Okay, so let me explain what's going on here. So I think I said at the start that um, one of the main things is to have, when you're designing a battery, one of the, the, the ultimate goals is to have a, a big energy density in a small package and so that the discharge of that battery when it's being used is as long as possible. So, for instance, if you look at the pink one here, um, you, this is nickel cadmium, so the red is, 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 is alkaline, but if you start with the nickel cadmium, um, you'll see that that is, as a first generation rechargeable, it's, it's quite poor. So um, it, first of all, you don't get the full amount that's, if you look at this, this uh, voltage axis, and if you think of this as a double A battery, which is 1.5 volts, you're not getting 1.5 volts with a nickel cadmium. You'll probably be getting slightly less, about 1.3. And the discharge curve is fairly rapid over time. Um, the alkaline is obviously 
is obviously the, the the holy grail at the time when they were inventing uh, rechargeable batteries and that's that's kind of linear ish it's not too bad from the linear and you get a decent amount of time from them and you get a full 1.5 volts when we moved on to nickel metal hydram it, it had the same the same problem as as nicad is that you never get the full amount at the start when you even when you fully recharge it you're always getting a little drop from the actual advertised voltage we're getting a 1.3 volt from a 1.5 volt battery but as as you can see on the blue line you get a little bit more time so it it takes longer to discharge so it's definitely an evolution but it's still less than the alkaline and then when you have the green one, which is what we're going to now, the lithium, you'll see that this, so far, this is our holy grail. We've got the maximum amount of time to discharge. So it, for any one bit of energy density, it's actually taking long, long time to discharge, which is your, your, your perfect package. You've got, you've got all that into a AA size battery or a AAA size battery. And yet... Uh, it takes quite a long time to discharge, so it's even better than the alkaline. So that's that's for all of its problems with um, things bursting into flames, <laughs> which you know that's why we have those. Uh, I mentioned the the inbuilt um, control electronics is to stop to keep them in the its safety parameters. But if, when you when you're looking at a, a, an energy density uh, discharge graph like this, uh, energy density in a, in a, in a, uh, discharge graph like this, lithium is the best technology we have at the moment. And that, I, I just wanted to show you that just because it's all, it's all well and good for me talking about how the timeline of these battery technologies came online in, in the consumer world. But you can see now that we're definitely at a stage where there's a, there's a, there's been a big increase from the very first one, which is the pink line to the, the current rechargeable one, which is the green line. Now we've got all that covered, I want to actually go through and tell you and show you the actual batteries themselves. Now, because I've never come, I've never um, opened these, I've just bought them. This is going to be um, a bit of a, a, a research project for me as well. I'm not going to know when I take them out of the boxes for the very first time and charge them up. Um, this is the first time I've ever seen them, so I don't know what we are going to see, but um, I'm hoping it's good. It's a void of discovery for all of us. So we've reached the point in the video, which is entirely the whole point of the video, really. It's the looking at the actual new wave of uh, rechargeable consumable batteries, the lithium-based batteries. Now, um, they're a little different to nickel metal hydride and NICAD. And as I was explaining in the, I've got my 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 um, uh, multimeter here just to test the voltage as they come out of the packaging. I've not, I've not, other than when I laid them out on the table earlier in the video, I've not taken these out of the packages before. They've been with me for a number of months now. I have no idea of their state of charge. And that's what we're going to check. They are different, as I'll, I'll try and talk and, um, and unpack at the same time, um, but I'm not very good at multitasking, so let's just see how this works. They are different um, from the nickel metal hydrides, as if you remember when I was going through the pros and cons, I said they all needed some special control circuitry uh, within the packages to make sure there that the the lithium um, is within uh, safety standards operating standards and this means that the battery charger that i use the uh, yushiko yc4000 for charging up my uh, my nickel metal hydrides i can't use that for these you'll see that when these all come they'll either come like this which the, with their own special battery charger and a usb cable and this one will be the same, I suspect. Yeah, so these, let me just move this out of the way. So this, um, this, this is the stand, this is one of the standards. So you either come with their own, oh, I've got loads of, loads of information in here, which I'll move out of the way. I'll move this box out of the way. They'll come with these um, special uh, battery chargers specifically for their particular cells. And these will go with that one and a USB cable or you'll you'll get them like this where um, so these came 
separately and these were all in Chinese so I suspect these are for specifically for Chinese speaking markets. You'll see these ones um, which actually do have the USB and this is a bit strange I must admit that you do have the USB uh, socket in the side of the actual battery container compartment cylinder I can't remember the word I was going to say but um in the, in the battery package package that's what I want so they'll have the USB C the USB um connector in the side they they're not USB Cs unfortunately which is a bit of a weird thing um so these are the triple A's with the same USB uh, connector in the side um, and you'll get a, you'll get a USB cable with all of these unfortunately like I say they're not USB C's none of these are USB C so that's a bit of a problem because that's obviously the way that everybody's going so I'll move this out of the way so that's all of the the, the batteries that I bought to test this out um, the ones with their own rechargeable uh, docking stations as they were or the ones that got the sockets in the side but all of these batteries will have the little um, control circuitry in the top so the actual cell will only be part of this whole container um, package here and the rest will be a little circuit I think uh, Big Clive's done a, a breakdown of one of these and he, you can see it on his site I'll if I remember I'll link below in the description um, to that but these are all um, but yeah, so this is this is the new wave. This is what's going to happen. Will we get these in all of our local shops and supermarkets? I don't know. So let's have a let's have a look at some of these. So let's just. I don't need the chargers at the moment. I'll just take these out of the way. They're all branded, so I should be able to get the the right charger package for the right set of batteries. So let's just take one of those. Um, let's just take one of those out of there. One of those out of the container. You see, there's there's different levels of quality that we're talking about here. Some of them are very much aimed at the English-speaking market and are um, sold on Amazon. Some of these are sold on eBay. Some of them are sold from AliExpress and Banggood. Um, I'll put the links to where I bought all of these in in the description. So let's get the uh, the multimeter out. Let's put it to 220 volts. We don't need 200 volts. Let me see if I can find my probes. Put these, put this into common. Uh, 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 DC. Right, let's try some of these here. You think I've been doing this? There you go. Aha, there you go. So 1.5 volts. They come fully charged. Um, that's better. 1.5 volts. Bang on. So these lithium, these new lithium cells look like they're becoming 1.5 volts fully charged from the packaging. And um, like I say, I've had them stored with me. It's I've probably had these. I bought these about six months ago. So let's try the smaller ones. The again, these are they're oh, oh, very small. Take my glasses off. Uh, One point five volts. It does say that these are a exec, ex, executive standard GB, which I presume is Great Britain, uh, rechargeable lithium lithium polymer battery, lipos. 600 milliamp hour, um, 900 milliwatt hour. Okay, so let's just try these, see if these have got 1.5 volt already charged. Okay, so they don't seem to have the fully charged, so. There's a very, there's a very small charge on that, but there's not, there's not the same, they're not fully charged like the other one was. That's interesting. So it seems like we have a, a bit of um, 
discrepancy about how these cells are get, being shipped out. So the yellow and blue ones are fully charged. The green and black ones aren't charged. Let's have a look at these ones. The double pow. Double pow. That is it's nearly fully charged. I've only got one of those cells um, because I don't know the... They didn't seem so wonderful as the other ones. Uh, they weren't very well packaged. There was a lot of uh, bad translations. So I thought I would only get one of these. But that seems to be... It does have a charge in. This, if I remember rightly, this, this one came without any real packaging. And therefore it, wasn't, it didn't adhere to the UN uh, standard for packaging. And it didn't... It's, it, it didn't... Um, um, meet the IATA air, air transport regulations actually this one uh, let's have a look at the last one which is the Bonai these again these are really well packaged it tells you on here designed for friendly environment protection mercury and cadmium are not included which I think it's fairly fairly self-explanatory consider it's lithium so let's have a look yeah, that's about 1 1.5, 1 1.496, that's 497. So, a mixed bag. Some of them are fully charged, some of them aren't, some of them are partially charged. And I think what we'll do now is we'll charge them up, see how they react. Um, I'll charge one, um, I'll charge some uh, nickel metal hydride batteries up using my Yushiko uh, charger, and I'll charge these up using the the standard charges that come with them, and let's see, um, let's see if we can uh, we can, if we can hit the 1.5 volts. Obviously, these are already at 1.5 volts. This one will probably never get to the fully 1.5 volts, and that would be the difference that I showed you earlier on on the pros and cons, and also on the discharge curve. So now we're at the stage of going to charge all the lithium batteries up. Now I don't, like I said, um, I don't have a readily available power socket here, so I'm going to use battery um, power banks. So batteries charging batteries. What a crazy world we're in. Um, I do have the lithium, uh, the nickel metal hydride uh, batteries charging up uh, just off the camera. And I'll get a photograph of those uh, so I can insert that into here just so you can see that they'll be all charged as full. So we're all starting as full. So let's start with the battery uh, charged, uh, the, the, the lithium batteries that have their built-in, that have their own charger. Let's have a look, I can't even get into these ones. Right, so let's just, positive, negative, they go there, they go there. They go there. Right, and they'll go there. And we'll charge those ones up first, and uh, the other ones um, here, um, I'll, I think they were the ones that already seem to be charged up, so I'll leave those last. But what we'll also do is, so I'll, I'll take, I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they're just standard USB cables, so I'll, um, oh dear, apparently I am going to have to unwrap another USB cable. I mean, these, I've got so many of these but never to hand because I'm very messy. Um, right, so what that in there. Now these are both, uh, these are both charged. I don't know, you see the blue lights on there, they're all fully charged. This one's on the front, fully charged. Um, I'll use those. So I'll pop, this one only has one, oops, oh dear. This one only has one output. So that can go in there. Okay, so they've all gone red. I don't know if you see that. They've all gone red. Um, so they're obviously, the red means charging. Presumably they'll go to green when they are charged. But the, the ones that I'm more intrigued about are the ones that don't have, um, that don't have a, a charging caddy that they just plug into the USB. So one of them comes with these. Um, this one comes with this particularly a rubbish flat USB cable, but I guess it all works the same. 
So uh, let's just plop that into the side. Uh, upside down. Yes, this is going to be harder than I thought. They're all standard. So, okay, that's gone in there. <laughs> One. That's it's it's weird. It seems weird put plugging USBs right into the side of a battery, a double A battery. But there you go. So that can go into one side. And the battery's charges on, and there's a little LED. There's a little red LED on the battery itself. Wow, that's tremendous. Uh, and then the other ones. Let's just. Oops, dropping things all over the place. I'm so untidy. Uh, this one had a dual, a dual USB because there was two in the pack, so that can go into there. And each one of these. Now, where is the LED for that one? I can think. Let's see it on the top. Yes, there's a little red LED on there. Little red LED, wonderful. And a little red LED there, upside down there. Yes, red LED. So red LEDs all over the place. Uh, I wonder if I could turn these lights down so you can see the red LEDs better. So obviously you can see the red LEDs on that one. That's fairly obvious. There's a red LED there. That's quite bright. Hopefully you'll see that one. Um, and on here we have two little red LEDs on the top of the triple A's. Hope you can see that. Right, so let's just turn the lights back up. And I guess at this point we just, we just wait <laughs> until they all go I'm presuming they'll all go green, and then we'll get the battery charger, the, the, get the multimeter out again, check the um, voltage. They should all be at 1.5 volts once they're all fully charged, full 1.5 volts, and then we'll check it against the nickel metal hydrides, which will be less than 1.5 volts, even though they are fully charged. Also, that's my that's my uh, my reasoning. Anyway, so uh, we'll come back in a bit. So, time has passed and we have now charged everything you see on the table. Um, these, when I tried to charge these up, these were already fully charged. They immediately went to green lights. Everything else went to a red light and then a green when they charged. These have little LED in the tops. It's the same with this one. It goes red and then green when fully charged. Um, this, the nickel metal hydride, for ladder uh, batteries, they were all fully charged as well. I have a photo to prove it. So, now that they've all been fully charged, the lithium and the nickel metal hydride, we're going to have another test of the um, voltage just to make sure that um, they are all fully charged. Now, what I suspect is that even though that the ladder uh, nickel metal hydride are fully charged, they're still not going to give you the 1.5 volts because that is an inherent problem with nickel metal hydride. But all of these other ones here, the lithium ones, should uh, give me the full 1.5 volts. Also, another thing that I found out with these new lithium batteries, take absolutely the same amount of charge uh, same amount of time to charge than the nickel metal hydride, which is a lot of hours. These took pretty much all afternoon to charge up, as did these. So let's try them. Let's take the first a, a nickel metal hydride, fully charged. Let's just have this. I don't know whether I can see that. Can I see that on the screen? Might have to bring this down. There you go. Might have to put the light on as well. Uh, that's not great. Have I done something wrong again? No. Voltage. 
There you go. So there you go. Let's just try that again. So it's 1.3 volts. Um, obviously it's a 1.5, uh, actually it's 1.2 volts. So on the side, but these are what you would assume, the double A's are what you would assume as 1.5 volts, but being the nickel metal hydride technology, you're never going to get the, yeah, 1.3. And obviously because this is one of the reasons why nickel metal hydride isn't great for some applications because some devices require the full <clears throat> the full 1.5 volts. I know my um God that's really low actually that one. Yeah, it's only gone to 1.1. So um my uh audio recorder my zoom h1n that i'm recording the the volume on here that uh, allows me to switch to tell it what whether i've got alkaline batteries in or um, nickel metal hydride so that they can the software can actually work out when the batteries are running out um so that's those so they will always give never go, you know you're going to give you a maximum of 1.3 volts but these and the whole one of the whole points of having of moving to lithium is that it should give you the full 1.5 volt if it's 1.5 volt on here uh which obviously this is the one i picked up which is entirely in chinese yeah yeah 1.5 volt so there you go let's just try this then 1.4 8 these should be also 1.5 the lipo 1.5 1.5 let's just take one random one out of here um, One point four nine, yeah, one point five, about that. And again, any one out here, we'll take this one out. One point five. So, absolutely. So, if the um, if the purpose of going for the lithium-based batteries in the standard consumable packaging the double a's the triple a's the c's and d's if that is to maintain the 1.5 volts at the start and to um, make the tail off um, on the discharge curve uh, a little bit more flat and uh, before it actually uh, drops off completely then that these are all good um, they're obviously much better than than these however you're certainly not going to get um, a quicker charge with these, the lithium-based batteries, and that you, you do on the nickel metal hydride. So that's not good. that's not really a benefit. And the only other thing is that there could be a problem is that you have to have um, either your own charger for each set, each manufacturer's set of batteries, which could be expensive, and certainly I you know I. I don't really have places to put all these chargers. Um, this charger was better than all of the, than this one because it did have a USB A and a USB C socket on it. Um, but in all in real terms, I guess the best version of all of them were the ones that had a USB socket in the side because then you could just use any old USB A cable. To charge them up um, so it'd be interesting to see which of the types of lithium battery you will end up seeing on the shop shelves I'm guessing that you'll not want to buy a set of batteries with a charger in for every single time you get some more batteries and I, I expect that these batteries with the USB -A in um, would be much more popular and much more easy to package and and cheaper 
but who knows who knows it may be that these char little charging blocks are so cheap to make then it really doesn't matter but again if your idea is to uh, reduce waste then selling batteries with a, a charging block every time is is not gonna is not gonna um, solve that problem but anyway there you go there's there's my um, sort of brief introduction to the new wave of um, lithium based rechargeable batteries that you should be coming into the your local s stores and supermarkets uh, over the next couple of years and uh, pretty good pretty good from what I've seen they they charge well they don't burst into flames and they give you the one the full 1.5 volts out if you liked this video and like all sorts of videos like this um, why not click um, like and subscribe to my channel and also click the little click dingy bell so you can you can uh, automatically know when I update the next set of videos thank you very much for watching goodbye